Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing villain, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You're rocking with the best. You heard? So shout out to you guys. Hey, this is the third installment. Three of 100. I am shooting for the 100 for 100 challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on my podcast broadcast. So real quick, we got to get right into it. Got a phone call. Michelle in Indiana. She hit me up and said, I think I'm not charging my clients enough. What do I do? Every time I give them a price, expensive, and they wind up not doing the deal with me. What do I do? And maybe you find yourself in that situation where, where you are underpricing your services, right? So let's get right into it. What do you do and what can you expect from overcharging or being more of a high ticket item? Here's what you can do. One, you, you need to understand the market that you're in, right? Ask yourself this, what radio station would do my customer listen to? Not the customer, well, your ideal in Chicago now, right? You have a multitude of radio stations. You have B96, you have V103, you have Power 92, you have GCI, right? If you want to cater to the market. Then you have 97.8, which is a classical station. Then you have other stations. Ask yourself, does, what, sta what station do they listen to? Now, if you know 92, that is more of a party crowd. You know, that's who they cater to. So you have to ask yourself, what radio station you have to second, you have to understand what I know an used to like gas prices are not that expensive out there. Yeah, gas prices aren't expensive. So Indiana is used to not having to pay a premium price for items. People in Chicago actually drive to Indiana sometimes to get gas. So that's, that is the culture out there. They're used to inexpensive things. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is this. When you start charging more for any product or any service above your competition, you are not going to get a lot of sales because you're no longer in the transaction business like that. You're more in the service provider business, meaning, and I'll explain that to you. What happens is when you have a very cheap price, people will buy your products and services like hamburgers, like 99 cent hamburgers at McDonald's. They'll sell a million of those like left and right. But when you're sell, selling things like more premium items, let's say Fuddruckers, I don't even think Fuddruckers are around anymore, but their burgers are like eight, nine, ten dollars They're not going to sell a lot of those burgers, but what they're going to do is they'll sell burgers in a smaller number, but have a higher profit margin. So that is one of the main things that you want to keep in mind whenever you're going to raise your price. If you raise your price, what's going to happen is your, your transaction volume is going to go down. You're not going to make frequent transactions all the time. You're going to have infrequent transactions. So if you're used to making a sale every single day, you might make a sale once every three days, you might make a sale one, you know, so it's like a person that's in the real estate market. 
You can sell probably ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar homes all the goddamn day. But when you're selling a million dollar home, half a million dollar home, two, three million dollar home, those transactions are not going to come in as frequently as the ten thousand dollar homes. But when you do sell, that is a big ass commission. So one, you have to look at uh, the long run too. You're not wasting gas. You're not, um, you know, being frazzled or, or working yourself up in a frenzy because you have to take care of so many clients. Your customer service ratio goes down. So there's a lot of things to take into, uh, into mind. Okay. You know what? Let me give a couple of shout outs. Shout out to Crystal, Troy, Cognac. What up, baby? Uh, Vernon, Arthur, Megan, Stacy, Larox, David. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you got, if you have any questions, definitely chime in. But yeah, again, you have to remember it's, it's nothing different. If you are in the dope game, you understand that too. You can sell nickel and dimes all goddamn day on the corner, but how many people are going to come up to you and buy keys, right? How many people are going to come buy a jar of ecstasy pills? And I'm not condoning any drug selling or anything like that, but I'm just saying it's the same concept. You may not get a lot of people that come to buy five keys of, you know, cocaine, but you'll have a million people buying nickels and dimes from you. So your volume ratio goes down. So first thing to think about, what radio station does my ideal customer listen to? Two, if I raise my price, does my market support it? Again, she lives in Indiana. They're used to inexpensive things. Gas prices are lower. Foods is a little bit lower. So the, the taxes are lower out there. They're used to paying a certain type of price. So she will be breaking into a market, charging more at a higher ticket item. And then thirdly, your volume goes down, but your profit margin goes up. So if you guys have any questions, holla at your bizzle. Remember, I am doing my 100 for 100. That's 100 videos in 100 days. If you guys want me to expound on anything or you got a topic that you want me to cover, holla at your boy. You already know what it is. Enjoy your weekend. Peace.